welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement professional while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hertz, and today we're talking about innovative trapeze work. So today we're gonna be talking about uh, the trapeze on the Cadillac. And there's lots and lots of fun classical choreography that you can use this trapeze for, so like classical breathing and some bridging work. But what I like to really do with the trapeze bar is help people enter into a little bit more of a dynamic movement in their body, something that's a little bit more freeing and easy, um, while experimenting and helping the clients even do, you can even think of it as a, a mini inversion for your clients that can't do things like long spine or short spine or anything like that. So what I want to talk a little bit about is being able to really see where people's movement breaks down in their body. How, you know, some areas of the body are supple and can organize very effectively in space and in gravity, while others are still sticky and stagnant and need a little bit of work. Now that comes from years and years of watching bodies and lots and lots of practice, but there are some really simple diagnostics that you can do to help determine maybe even where to start with a client in a session. So this trapeze work, this fish body work as I call it, is really nice to bookend a session with because you see where the client starts and they feel where they start. And then after all of the beautiful work that you do within that time, you can go back afterwards, do the same movement and see what's changed, if it's easier, or if the body as a whole is just moving in a more integrated manner. Now, that being said, it's the big I word, integration. You know, it's such a huge Pilates principle. We, we know that we don't move in dissection. Yes, a lot of times in Pilates, we scale down movements, we scale down uh, exercises to get to skill sets, trying to maybe stabilize the pelvis but move the femur or maybe stabilize the femur and move the pelvis, right? We're always kind of looking for this interplay in our joint structure and how to do it more easy. But what happens is, is sometimes we can lose this idea in the way that we cue and the way that we teach of the whole body ringing as one that really the idea of doing these small, subtle, very detail-oriented uh, cues isn't to build rigidity, but to more or less build more communication through the body as a whole. So what I'm gonna show you is, again, what I call the fish body movement to see where the bells are ringing in the body and maybe where there's a little bit too quiet of tissue. So what I have my clients do is lay down and you can use a pillow or not use a pillow, depending, I'll use a pillow today because we know that if we pillow up the body, especially with these smart spine pillows, that it really does give us a nice anchoring at the back of the heart space, the T8 vertebra. So first things first, getting people into this gentle inversion is really, really nice. Not that many people elevate their legs today. It's so vital to get the flow of your lymph system, your circulatory system, to be easier this way in the body, especially for our clients that are sitting in desks for most of the day or standing most of the day. So from here, what we do is you start to swing the legs from right to left. Now, you can do it yourself. What I'm doing is I'm starting the swing, but then I'm gonna let go of driving it, and I'm gonna let this trapeze swing me until it goes to an absolute center point, and then I'm gonna do it again. So I go through this with my clients a few times, 
And sometimes I even have them be completely the, the bystander and not move it themselves. And I push this trapeze from right to left and then I tell them, now let the trapeze swing you. Now, this seems really simple, but it's very, very difficult to let go enough to let the trapeze really move your tissue. So as I'm watching the client swing, I'm seeing, do their legs roll in and out? Does their pelvis shift from right to left more on one side or on the other? Can I see that that swing is moving all the way to the crown of the head, which it really should. There should be this gentle undulation in all of the joints, just like a fish moves, right? When you see a fish move in water, it's not just the fins, <laughs> right? It's the whole body that really, really creates that serpentine-like movement. We're built much the same way. So, from here, in my body, I can feel that I don't have so much swing on this side of my body, even into the waist. I feel much more of that through the right side. So I know that the resting tissue tension in this quadrant of my body is pretty, pretty stand, it's standing out. So this is an area that I want to address before I move because this might be an area that's really holding up things like my natural breath pattern, my spinal alignment, my spinal articulations. It might even be pairing with hip tension somewhere else. So again, when you're looking at your clients doing this work, we're looking for those areas of, of stagnation, the areas that are quiet. It's not reciprocating in that kind of swing undulation. Um, more and more teaching from this place of looking at where the body is tense even and resting is very powerful because it's usually an indicator for disharmony and compensation patterns. And this is really nice, especially for the beginner teacher to look at because so many times we hear things like, you know, how did you know to go to that area and that was going to unlock, say, the movement of the femur and the pelvis? Um, this is a nice, nice diagnostic to make that a, a simpler, uh, more clear a demonstration so that you can really start to look at the body in, in a different way than just trying to tell people exercises. This is, this is a powerful shift in awareness and focus into saying, no, I'm going to do all of those beautiful movements, but all looking for those areas, those kind of nooks and crannies of the body for that particular person. With every person that you do the swing with, it's going to be a different story. It's going to be a different combination of tightnesses that really uh, make up how the person organizes in space. So experiment with doing the swing work before your session and after your session to see if there is a little bit more buoyancy in the tissue, a little bit more health, and uh, much more vitality in their movement. Ginger writes in asking about how the feet are the foundation for the body and why. Great question. Um, I love feet. I love working with feet. I see many, many profound changes in clients' posture and gravity from doing really, really simple foot release and exercises. So the best way I thought is, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words and videos even better. So just thinking about the structure of the feet, right? It's a, it's a complex of tiny bones. So any place in the body that has a complex of tiny bones is built for mobility, okay? So your femur, 
not so much built for mobility, it is what it is. But the feet and its structure really is meant to twist and flex and move depending on a few different things. One, the environment in which you're standing on. That's the first piece. Number two, it's also about how you can fight back against gravity. Do you fall into gravity? How does that work? The feet are almost like a little feed forward system preparing not only the brain for what's happening underneath it, but the body as a whole into the ankle, knee, hip, constantly telling it to calibrate and organize on a neurological level and how to move fluidly forward in space. The feet are one of the first places that transmutes vertical energy, gravity, into horizontal energy so that we can be upright. Um, so let me show you a simple demonstration of why feet are the foundation and why we really need to pay attention to it. So I'm gonna stand up here on the Cadillac and so I have here a squishy yoga block with a drawer liner underneath it. Now the squishy part is key because I'm gonna stand up on the squishy yoga block. Now holding on to this, not so difficult to stand on, but if your feet are too rigid, something will happen when you let go, right? So if my feet were really rigid and only had a few options for movement through those 26 bones, Things like I start to tip here, my whole body would go with it. But notice as I stand here, all of those little micro movements of the feet are keeping everything above it active, but also stable, right? If your foot and ankle is too rigid, any little micro movement would toss you off kilter and it would be very hard to organize our neutral spine and pelvis. And although I can have all of my gorgeous Pilates goodies of femur slurping in, sitting bones nice and wide, breathing deeply, TA multifidi turned on, if my foot isn't very good at being able to react to the changing environment underneath it, all of this is lost. Another way to think about this too is there's this bone right inside here between the malleolus called your talus. And that is a very, very important bone. It helps to, to uh, your vestibular system, it helps your balance, but it also talks to your sacrum. So if that bone isn't moving correctly, things like walking and gait become really difficult to do and we start doing really maybe interesting push off and heel glide land. We want to be able to roll onto our first ray as we move and have a good push off and landing. But if the feet can't do its innate spiral movement with the full facility of all of the bones and then also push off, our hips and our back do really peculiar things to try to make that happen. Do lots of people who walk externally rotated really aren't moving through that kind of articulation of the whole foot. They're mostly, I call it ice skating. They're mostly pushing off from the hips here instead of walking through their pelvis. So these are a few of the reasons why feet are really the, the foundation to lasting success in uh, upright uh, alignment and organization in the body because we know the, the easiest way to turn on the core body and the core musculature is to get the, the bones hopefully as close as we can to a neutral functioning position, especially in gait. Um, so if we're doing lots of compensatory patterns through the feet, the hips, ankles, all of that, it makes it very, very difficult for the body to be in that 
core strength, which is what gaps the bones and gives us that anti-gravity piece. So please, please, please pay attention to the feet of all of your clients. It's one of those things that they can simply work on themselves, um, but it really, really does increase the quality of life and movement in your clients. That's all for today. If you have an observation or a question, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or our forum. Thanks so much for watching and never stop learning.